Hi, this is Yogesh Sapil Bharti and welcome to TFR. Let's talk. Today we have with us once again Randy Bias, VP of Open Source Strategy and Technology at Mirantis. Randy, it's great to have you back on the show. It's great to be here. Yeah, it's my pleasure. And today we are going to talk about Harbor and Qbert support added by Mirantis. But before we talk about Mirantis, let's quickly uh, do a quick intro to Harbor and Qbert and what role do these projects play in the whole CNC of landscape. So Harbor is a registry for managing your container images. It's a way for you to uh, have governance and compliance, to be able to see your catalog of images, to be able to push and pull them, to basically be able to manage them as you go along. Uh, Qvert is basically a methodology for you to run virtual machines on top of Kubernetes. Um, in the past, people have really looked at running containers inside of VMs, but there's always been the possibility of using containers as the delivery mechanism for virtualization technology like KVM. Thank you. Now let's talk about how does Mirantis work with both Harbor and Kubert. I think some of your viewers may remember our last uh, uh, video where we had an interview and we talked about, you know, why I came on board Mirantis, you know, kind of the new direction that Mirantis is taking, or I should say uh, a new direction to an old direction where we're doubling down on open source. We have these ambitions to be 100% pure play open source player. And in the past, we have our own registry internally called MSR. Um, now we want to support Harbor, which is a 100% open source registry. Uh, we want to support Kubert in addition to Mosque, which is our OpenStack-based product. So what, we're, what we've decided to do is uh, give our customers as much choice as possible. We want them to be able to use 100% open source. We want them to be able to get their registry directly from the CNCF ecosystem with Harbor, get it from us as MSR, if they so choose as an enterprise product, uh, get uh, Marantz's OpenStack to basically run their virtual machines or do Qvert on top of MKE or their own Kubernetes distribution if they so choose. And Marantz is there for them, whether they want to use a Marantz product um, or, or whether they want to just use 100% open source and get support from Marantz for Harbor or for Qbert. And can you also talk about what is the reason that Marantz finally decided to provide support to these two projects? This is just the beginning, right? This is the tip of the iceberg, right? When I came on board, we had that first interview. I sort of talked about how we're headed this direction. We're going to be more and more 100% pure play open source player. We think that customers want choice. They want optionality. They don't want to be locked into vendors. They've seen all these problems, be, you know, since the Broadcom acquisition of VMware. And they're looking for new solutions that are 100% open source that are supported by, you know, uh, relevant, credible players like Mirantis. So so this is the beginning. We have lots more coming. Um, you know, we are about ultimately uh, providing customers with the solutions that they want and not necessarily making them have a choice of particular products. So we'll provide an enterprise product if they want it. And we're also going to support their open source uh, if that's what they want as well. What does this support look like uh, for each project from the perspective of users and customers? Yeah, so for either Harbor or Qvert, we basically got multiple options. You know, you've got an 8x5 kind of silver option. You've got a 24x7 kind of more premium option in terms of support, kind of the typical enterprise support you would want. And then we've got additional uh, uh, sort of non uh uh, non-support options that we can provide in terms of customization, integration, um, you know, helping you with figuring out what your deployments look like, so all the professional services around it. So it's basically sort of the white glove treatment. If you've decided that you're going to move forward with Harbor or with Qvert as a solution, we can be there and provide it for you. Uh, we'll support it in tandem with uh, existing Mirantis products. We'll support it with other people's products. We'll support it on Amazon Web Services. We'll support it on Google. We'll support it on VMware. Like, you know, we're, we're just about making sure that customers don't have any lock-in and they've got a partner who's going to support their open source any way they want it. And as you were earlier saying, you know, it's just the big thing. It's like a tip of an iceberg. Uh, does that also mean that Mirantis either already have or is planning to offer similar level of support services for other open source projects, which are, you know, in the whole Kube, Kubernetes, you know, Kube, uh, CNCF, or even open infra ecosystem? 
yeah, I mean, we're, we're all in on this direction. You're going to see more announcements in the near future. Um, you know, we've hinted at sort of a new open source product we're bringing uh, out to the community soon called Project Two Way. Uh, there will be some conversations about that in the hallways in Kubicon. The code's already out there. If you know where to look for it, it's all being developed in the open. Um, you know, the intent, again, you know, there's, there's, there's no change in sort of our posture. Our posture is customers want open source solutions. Sometimes they want it as an enterprise product. They want a whole bunch of packaging around it. Sometimes they don't, right? Some customers buy MSQL or MySQL, for example, or MariaDB, or they go get it and they deploy it, I should say, and they do it all on their own. They don't ask for any help. Sometimes they get to a point where they are deploying it in sort of, you know, kind of the mid-range for semi-production kind of use cases, and they decide they need enterprise support. They go out and they get a vendor who gives them that support. Sometimes they get into a position where it's a mission-critical component, and they want, you know, kind of the best of the best, and they're going to go get an enterprise version of MySQL or MariaDB. That's basically our strategy. We see there being sort of multiple tiers where customers um, want to want us to meet them where they're since you are here now at Mirantis and you will be there at KubeCon as well how should community the open source community look at Mirantis now I would say that the best way to look at us is that we are a business that had really earnest intentions to provide open source based solutions to our enterprise customers I mean we're running some of the largest OpenStack and Kubernetes deployments in the world. We had the most earnest intentions for our customers to have, you know, these solutions that were 100% rock solid. And so we went into a mode where we really packaged up open source. We built these incredibly bulletproof enterprise products. I mean, our customers are running, you know, in some cases, thousands and thousands of hypervisors for OpenStack and hundreds and hundreds of clusters for Kubernetes. They're doing it in production. You know, 25% of the world's credit card transactions, you know, are going through a bunch of these systems, right? So, you know, the largest, one of the largest, uh, you know, uh, real estate, uh, not real estate, but uh, hotel booking engines in the world is running on these, right? So, you know, the fact that they can do this, the fact that we can keep them upgraded on a regular basis, that they're not behind five, six, seven, eight releases is because we really productized the open source that we had into this, these Bulletproof products. But then we found that we went a little bit too far. It was too packaged. It was too opinionated. And we found that some customers wanted just more the the generic 100% open source. And so, we're going to give them both. We're going to meet them where they're at. We're going to give them the open source solutions that they want. And what we want uh, the Kubernetes ecosystem to know is that we're here. We're back in the game. You're going to see us starting to uh, contribute a lot more. Uh, for example, we're looking at pushing back our OpenStack operator for Kubernetes that runs inside a mosque that does all the lifecycle management. We're looking at pushing that back into the community. That thing is you know, five, six, seven years of battle-tested hardness, you know, running at massive scale. And we're looking at more and more places where we can play like that. Of course, we are talking about CNCF or even Open Infer Landscape, a massive project, a lot of open source projects there. Big companies can easily have all the resources to run those projects internally, but uh, smaller companies are, you know, a lot of other companies, they may not have. So can you talk about how is Mirantis kind of making these projects more accessible. It's more like even further democratizing open source by offering commercial support because we have discussed earlier without commercial support, open source will not even succeed. So can you talk about the importance of these commercial players supporting open source projects? Yeah, I mean, I think it's really, really simple. It's easy for technology to get in into the enterprise. It's really easy for it to be broadly adopted. I, I think for those of us who have been around a long time, we remember when Java was a new player. Right. <laughs> and it was getting adopted bottoms up into the enterprise as sort of the new uh, uh, programming language, you know, that everybody was so uh, giddy about. Now it's dominant there. Right. And, you know, most of the enterprise is covered in Java. What do you do if there's a new technology that's solving real problems for you, like a lot of the new artificial to art artificial intelligence tools and your teams are adopting them quickly because they're trying to meet the demands of the business to run fast, to reduce time to market, to bring uh, new solutions for your customers to market. Well, you know, suddenly you've got something running in production. 
who's supporting it. Sure, you have IT teams, but are your IT teams going to know everything? Can they be trained on every single solution out there? The answer is no. You have to pick and choose your battles, what your IT teams are going to are going to um, basically become experts at. And then you've got to go outside and you've got to get help from the folks who are experts at things that you don't want your IT team to be experts at. Randy, thank you so much for taking time out today. Not only talk about open source, but also Harvard and Kubert. Thanks for discussing these two projects and the support Mirantis project provide not only to these projects, but other open source projects as well. Thanks for great insights. And I look forward to talking to you again soon. Thank you. Great. Thanks a lot. Appreciate you.